We all like knowing more about our favorite shows, and since I'm willing to bet that plenty of you love and appreciate Your Lie in April, I figured a video like this exploring some facts you probably didn't know could be fun for us all. So if you do end up enjoying it in any way, it would be super appreciated if you leave the video a like as it helps the channel out a ton. Also definitely let me know if I missed any cool facts, as well as which one among these was your favorite in the comments down below. And hey, if you're new around here and want to see more videos like this on other anime in the future, feel free to subscribe and stick around for those. With all that fun stuff out of the way, let's face the facts. Fact 1. One fact you might not be aware of right off the bat is that Your Lie in April was meant to be a challenge by the author Naoichi Arakawa to make his editor Shinichi Ada cry. And with her being one of the first people to read the transcripts, she was among the very first to cry at the story and its subsequent material. Fact 2. The Japanese voice actor for Kusei also voices Tanjiro Kamado from the popular shounen Demon Slayer, as well as Yoja Narukami from The Day I Became a God, which by the way are two awesome shows in their own right, so big ups to the actor for nailing so many awesome roles in addition to Kusei. Keep me on trend with the voice actor facts, fact 3 involves the voice actor for Takeshi Aiza, Eric Scott Kimmerer aka Super Saiyan Piano Player, as this voice actor also voices the character of Ryuji Takasu from Toradora, which you might know I've made several videos on for in the past. And for any of you big Pokemon fans out there, he also voiced Blue in the Pokemon Generation Shorts on the Pokemon YouTube channel, which when I was watching them may or may not have blown my mind when I first found out. Fact 4, the series also has a stellar live action adaptation which drew 1.42 billion yen, which equates to about 13.5 million dollars. It recaps the series and genuinely is worth a watch if you haven't had a chance to see it already. Fact 5, conversely to her frail persona in Your Lie in April, Kyrie's English voice actress Erica Lindbeck also voices the character of Jericho from The Seven Deadly Sins, who may or may not be one of the toughest adversaries to the sins in the early parts of the series. Also, if you're wondering if this was the only character who she plays in a show that's guaranteed to make you depresso, then you'll want to know that she also voices Anaru or Naruko Anjo from Anohana the Flower We Saw That Day. Fact number 6. Originally when conceptualizing the manga, the author Naoshi Arakawa had wanted to make Your Lie in April as something of an erotic comedy manga, but later changed it entirely to the vision we saw come to life. That said, I really don't want to know the process which led to this change being made. Needless to say though, I'm extremely happy that they did reconsider the story they wanted to tell through music this way. Fact 7. If you're a fan of the Peanuts aka the 1950s comic strip which has since made its way through modern media, then you may have picked up on the fact that Kairi often quotes the series in her dialogue. For example, in episode 6 she quotes, It takes courage to sail through uncharted waters by Snoopy. And in episode 7 she quotes, When you're depressed it always helps to lean in on your head and arms. As arms like to feel useful, which is by Charlie Brown. Fact number 8. In addition to the plot we end up getting and the structure we received, the author also apparently came up with 16 alternative plots, which aside from a few, they didn't exactly go into detail on. And on to fact number 9, and we can take a look at one of those alternate April based realities, in which you'll know one of the most important characters unfortunately bites Zadusto. Yes, that was a JoJo reference, my 1am brain thought of it and felt the need to type it into the script. Back to the fact though, rather than it being Kaiori who sadly passed at the end of the series, it was actually Kusei who was selected to pass on. Unfortunately, the detailing on the story beyond this isn't really available, but man, I wish I had access to some of those transcripts to see how the story would have changed and what alternative themes they would have had to explore. On the off chance, if you guys maybe want to see a video of me exploring my ideas on that, definitely let me know in the comments. Now, on to fact number 10. Not that you need to be a music aficionado to really appreciate the quality story that Your Lie in April gives us, but for keen-eyed viewers who like to read too much into things, there's something especially interesting about the first piece that Kusei plays. Notably, Ludwig von Beethoven's Piano Sonata No. 14 in C minor, Quasi Una Fantasia, which is more popularly known as the Moonlight Sonata's third and last movement, Presto Agitatio. Now we're on to fact number 11, and while that last fact is pretty interesting in itself, this next one piggybacks off the composer as well as Kusei as the player sharing a similar childhood, which if you're curious is the fact that they both unfortunately grew up in homes with abusive parents. This little detail could be seen as a bit of foreshadowing to the trauma we would be exposed to later on down the road with Kusei. Fact number 12. Keeping on trend with things keen-eyed viewers would catch along with, we should take a moment to talk about Kaiori's hair. 
which if you've ever noticed goes through some drastic changes over the course of the show as it goes from a golden lively blonde to a lifeless whitish blonde as a means to express how her condition has grown worse. On to fact number 13, speaking of Kaiori, her name can be translated to mean fragrance, which much like her life, is something that can pass by in a flash. And it can also be translated to weaving, which maybe could represent the fact that she weaves her way into the lives of Kusei and his friends as a means to be remembered. Though I will say that those ideas are just kind of my interpretation, so take those as you will. Next we got fact 14. Onto her male counterpart Kusei, and his name loosely translates to composition which as a noun means the nature of something's ingredients or constituents, aka the way in which a whole mixture is made up. This might allude to the culmination of experience which he has acquired to get to the point he's at within the series. Alternatively, the word is also commonly used as a synonym for work of art or creation, which again, lines to his character pretty well. Next up, fact number 15. Back to Kaiori for a second and you might have noticed in the flashback scene in the final episode of the series that she was wearing glasses. Which would of course beg the question of why she hadn't worn them at any other point in the series if she had problems with her eyesight. However, again if you're a Kian viewer, you would have likely noticed that instead of using those glasses that she swapped over to contacts. Now, on to fact number 16. While the series in many ways may have won your heart, its manga actually won the award for best shown in manga at the 37th Godansha Manga Awards. As well as its anime adaptation was the winner of the Yumuri Shimba Newspapers 2016 Segoi Japan Awards. Now on to fact number 17. The episode where Kaiori and Kusei rushed to perform their first duet in the anime was reported to the Broadcasting Ethics and Program Improvement Organization, with the complaint of, there's a scene where two middle schoolers share a bicycle. Children might try to copy this and it's dangerous, so please do not broadcast this scene. So in Japan, they actually end up stopping broadcasts of this specific scene just so kids in Japan wouldn't try it. Next up, fact 18. Now while these cool musical pieces are featured heavily in the anime, one composer in specific was featured a bit more than every other, as Chopin's pieces appear the most out of all other artists' songs in the anime, as five of his songs appear. On to fact number 19, and we all know that Kaiori is a real firework in the mostly empty sky that's Kusei's life. And knowing this, it should come as no surprise that even though she's from Japan, this bright light was born on the 4th of July. Heading out of the teens and on to fact number 20, in addition to all the other alternative ways the series could have gone, if you'd believe it, the author actually had barely any interest in classical music. Which, when you consider that's one of the main points of the show, you might be wondering what changed. Well, originally the author Naoshi Arakawa was inspired by Beck, which is a show about a guy's dull life being shaken up by a certain band. It's a really good show. However, since the publisher was already currently running that series, he couldn't exactly go for the same or even a similar premise. However, rather than letting his hopes be dashed, he one day came across a photo of a person playing the violin. The word that he used to describe it was that he saw the posturing as simply beautiful. Oddly enough, that's the only detail he remembers about it. Now she has no idea where he even saw the photo. But if only by a stroke of fate, he saw it and we end up getting this unforgettable series. On to fact number 21, and this one will sort of follow off the last fact, which is how the animation for Kyori came to be. It should serve as almost no shocker that Your Lie in April contains some stunning visuals, especially in their performances. But what if I were to tell you that in addition to them being beautiful, they're also accurate to the scores being played, as the animation staff actually paid a violinist so that they could get them to play pieces and emulate their movements to really capture the emotion the instrument can convey through the animation. Next up, fact number 22, and we're keeping on trend with these stellar looking violin scenes. If you've noticed, there are several parts of these scenes where it flips to a top down. That's because one of the producers thought there may be some issues if the animation team tried to fully tackle the complex movement through animation head on, by giving us just a straight on view of the violinist. Ultimately, this contributed greatly to the scenes by giving us more variety in the different camera angles we were shown. And considering how great they are as is, this choice is probably best for all involved. Fact number 23 is a little bit wholesome, I will say. It's always nice to receive praise from others in your field of work especially when they're giants in that industry. So when the maker of One Piece, Eiichiro Oda, publicly praised the series and declared in an interview that he was jealous of its ability to convey music as a manga, it was only within a day of that praise being heard that the series sold out to the point publishers had to order reprints to meet the massive demand. Now that's some high praise. And we're on to fact number 24. To end this video off on one more fact, I think we should take one more moment to talk about the ending of the series which at the time when the anime was being made, the author wanted to change over to being a bit happier of a scene. In which, rather than Kairi passing away during his performance and during her operation, Kairi would have survived and ended up with Kusei. 
However, as the animation staff had already gone through pre-production on this part of the series with his initial vision, which we saw in the ending of the series, it remained unchanged as the author didn't want to confuse the staff by shoehorning in a different ending while they had already gone through so much work. And for as bittersweet as it is, I don't really think it would have been right for Your Lie in April to have ended any other way. And speaking of endings, that's going to mark the end for this video. But if I had add one more fact to this list, it's that if you made it all the way to the end of this video, you definitely love this show. And hey, if you do want to see more videos talking about in the future, definitely let me know in the comments. I said at the beginning of the video, but I'll say it again, that it would help the channel out a ton if you would also drop a like on the video as well. Not to mention, if you want to be notified of future uploads like this from me in the future, be sure to drop a subscribe, as well as ring that bell so you never miss a video. God, is this what real YouTubers do for outros? I don't know how I feel about it, guys. Anyway, I genuinely hope you enjoyed the video and are able to take something new away from the series as a result of it. But for right now, I think I'm gonna dip. As always, I hope you stay safe and be bold, and I... We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.